Hi everybody, welcome back to my Cook at Home with Tonya series here at my Cooking on the Bay Kitchen. So nice to see you again. This afternoon we're going to be making a vanilla bean ice cream with xylitol, which is the plant-based sugar that we use in our low carbohydrate and healthy fat cooking. Um, uh, I don't often make this uh, ice cream in cooking classes because it requires an ice cream churn and it requires a creme anglaise base, but I thought it's nice for you to learn how to do a creme anglaise because you can put that over some fruit and have it as a lovely dessert on its own. Um, and once it's churned, it actually makes the most delicious ice cream. So for those of you who are lucky enough to have an ice cream churn, you will enjoy this. And if you really want to get into ice cream and, um, and you're happy to make it with the xylitol and with the cream, as I'm going to do it today, you might like to go and buy an ice cream churn. So, what we have traditionally, the ice cream is made with cream and milk, but we don't use cream, uh, milk in our low carbohydrate and healthy fat program. So we just have cream here, and we're going to scald the cream, which means just bringing it to under a simmer. And I'm just going to put it on slightly just to get it going. But we're going to add one uh, teaspoon of vanilla paste. Okay, this. And I'm going to also add a vanilla bean because I thought you may like to just see, you've probably seen it before, but for those who haven't, we're just going to slice the vanilla bean open down the middle. And we're going to remove the seeds and put it into the, the uh, cream. And scrape the seeds out. The seeds are what are the precious flavouring. And it also gives the ice cream a lovely, a lovely little black vanilla seed going through it, which is an indication that it's been made well with good quality ingredients. There's my opening there, so we'll scrape it down. There. Get as many of those little seeds out as you can. This is quite a small bean actually, some of them are much wider than that. Vanilla beans take such a long time to grow, that's why they're quite expensive. But they're, and I often, these days, use um, vanilla paste instead. Anyway, we're going to put that in too. So we're going to keep an eye on that. And I will have a little taste of it when we're finished, just to, um, to make sure that there's enough vanilla flavour in there because um, you really want to get a hit of vanilla. Okay, so the idea is that we'll bring this up to the, just as I said, scold it, which is just under or to a simmer, and then we'll turn it off. We're going to separate our eggs. We've got five eggs, which we're going to separate, and put the egg yolks into the sugar. We've got 120 grams of xylitol, uh, and we're going to whisk up the egg yolks with the sugar. And I'll do that then, and then we'll go on to the next step. So, to separate your eggs, I freeze my egg whites. I use them all the time in various things. So I freeze them in little containers of two. And I always break my eggs into separate containers, especially when I'm separating them. So that if I do happen to break a, an egg yolk, I've only wrecked one instead of five. So there's my two together there. These are actually are quite smallish eggs at the moment. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger. They're from my nice poultry man, Chris Johnson at KNL Poultry in the South Melbourne market. And Chris tells me that his grandmother still runs the business. Although he's the main worker in the business at the market. So she's a it's been in his business in his family for quite some years, his poultry business. About at least three generations anyway. So these are always lovely eggs. And that one goes in there. So there are ice creams that you can make without churns, and we often do those in cooking classes. 
Um, parfaits are good to make if you don't happen to have an ice cream churn. Um, but this ice cream is lovely and creamy and luscious. So let's just see how this is going. With the vanilla bean, you can um, use it quite a few times because there's a lot of flavour in there and you never get the first the first time you use it doesn't take out all the um, all the vanilla seeds. So after this I'll just wash it out, dry it out on a piece of Scott towel and put it away for another time, okay? And the vanilla beans actually, even the old ones that don't have much flavour for your food, they make your pantry smell absolutely lovely. So just keep them in the pantry for a while. Okay, so we'll just twist this up. Now with xylitol, if you have a little look in here, Michael, you can see the crystals of the xylitol. They're much thicker, much coarser, okay? And you never want to leave your eggs sitting in sugar because the sugar cooks the eggs and they get ruined. So, So this takes a bit of whisking because you're wanting to dissolve your sugar as best you can. So you want it to be nice and white and fluffy. And if you want to, in your ice cream you can um, put some grated chocolate. You can infuse a uh, some raspberries or strawberries in the oven to break them down a little bit. You need them slightly cooked before you put them in the ice cream. Otherwise, if you put fresh uh, strawberries or raspberries in your ice cream, they become solid little masses, which is not what you're after. You can see the steam starting to come off it. So obviously, it's coming to the heat a little bit. So it's cold. We don't want it to boil. Then we're going to add the cream, the scalded cream, to this egg sugar mixture. And that's basically the base of your creme anglaise. So we then put it back into this pot, a clean pot. I didn't wash out that one, but we're going to use a clean pot. And cook it on the stove until it coats the back of the spoon. And at that stage, you've got your creme on grass. See how nicely that's coming up? to use one of these hand beaters, hand electric beaters, than rather getting out your, your big mix master, I feel. <laughs> Makes it a little bit easier. So I'll just check here. And I'm going to check the flavour. Mm. I am going to add a little bit more. The last time I made this, I added about two or three tablespoons. It was, it was quite a lot. So that's three teaspoons altogether. Okay. So you can see that now. It's just got some nice, just under a bit of simmer, so it's a scold, if you like. So we're going to add it to the eggs and we're going to add a little bit at a time. It's called delaying the cream or delaying the milk. Okay, so now I've put all my, my cream and my eggs and uh, sugar together. I'm just going to take out the vanilla bean Remove the vanilla bean, we'll wash that in a moment. But I want you to see any last little little bits of the vanilla 
seeds, I want to get those out and I want to get them into this bowl because that's the flavour that we're wanting to add to our vanilla bean ice cream. Good, so the bowl's nice and clean. I'll leave that there, I'll use it again. I will wash that and dry it for another time. And now we're going to put this, just take these out. And I'm going to put this all into a clean pot. Smells absolutely beautiful, everyone. <laughs> and it tastes good too. Simple, pretty straightforward. Now, when this goes back on the heat, we have to, this is the actual cooking of the custard, okay, because it's a custard base that we've got. Now, I like to use a square based uh, wooden spoon, so it's not really a spoon, but it it is a spoon, but it's not. I much prefer these square bases because they get right into the corner of your pot and it means that you will um, not get any scrambling of eggs. Now that's what you have to avoid, the scrambling of eggs. And you may like to at home, which is sometimes we do this in cooking classes, I'll sometimes have a bowl of iced water here so that if this does go anywhere near starting to scramble, I immediately put the pot into the sit it in the bowl of ice water, the ice slurry, to cool it down. And then I, and then I immediately put it into another bowl, um, dip it into another bowl, put it back into the ice slurry, and save the scramble. So, you can feel it. Can you see it in here, Michael? You can actually feel this, even after this short time, getting thicker. And you can probably see it getting thicker too, can you? Okay. The best ju judge as to how hot things are is to put your finger in. That's not quite hot yet, so it's fine. I'm nowhere near it. And I have got it on the small jet too, so. Um, so this often can take about 10 or 15 minutes, okay? So I sometimes will time it, um, just to give me an indication as to how far away it is. You could put the, um, the thermometer in if you wanted to, and that would be a very accurate way of checking it. And, uh, but we're just going to keep on stirring here and the idea is you want it until it coats the back of the spoon well you can see that's almost nearly there so I'll just stir this stir this at this stage I often make a phone call to a friend <laughs> while I'm stirring my my creme anglaise custard hi everyone back again I've taken the creme anglaise, the base for the ice cream, out of the fridge. It actually spent about half an hour in the freezer cooling down as well. I've also washed the vanilla bean really well. It's going to dry on this Scott towel and when it's very dry I'll put it back in the special little container I have to seal it to keep it fresh for next time. So the creme anglaise, I have tasted it and it actually tastes absolutely beautiful. Lovely, creamy, fabulous vanilla. This little container I've had in the freezer for the 12 hours before I, um, I'm making the ice cream. So this, we nestle into the ice cream churn and make sure that the paddle's down. And this is the uh, container that we're going to put the finished ice cream in. So now just, we're going to pour it in. And so it will automatically churn in this machine. It is a great machine, this Breville. I bought it about eight years ago, ten years ago. So there are probably even newer models out now, but this is very good. And it makes lovely creamy ice cream. And the fact that it's made without erythritol is really good because we can very happily have it as part of our low carbohydrate program. There we are. 
so that's locked in place. So then I put this onto ice cream, just turn the dial to ice cream and press the start and it will turn. And it's going to take probably about 20 minutes. Okay, so we'll come back when the little beeper goes off and we will then put the ice cream into our ice cream container here, ready for when we would like to have our dessert. Okay, so the ice cream machine has turned itself off. It's um, uh, gone to its required setting. So you can see it in there looking really beautiful. Now this you can eat as it is, but usually you would um, uh, put it into a freezer container or freezer, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Um, oh, so take this out. Now sometimes if it's very stiff, which mine isn't because this is the nature of my ice cream, um, if, but if it is very stiff, don't take that paddle out because it can break it. So take out the ice cream first. Now one thing I didn't mention to you um, when I was doing the, um, the creme anglaise, for those of you with a food thermometer, the temperature of the creme anglaise, which is the consistency of getting um, the custard to um, the thickness of being able to um, put your finger down the spoon and, and for it not to run into it itself, um, is 83 degrees, okay? So if you want to do it with that, with a sugar thermometer, that's probably a very good idea. Um, and uh, a sugar thermometer isn't that expensive. This is it, probably about $25. So if you're going to be doing all your desserts, it's good. But otherwise, you just have to look at the process of the creme anglaise custard. And when you can run your finger down the back of the spoon, spoon and it coats the back of the spoon and it doesn't it doesn't um, take over the, um, the little mark that you've made, the little road, well then you know it's right. So this will firm up to be um, a lovely consistency, a smidgen firmer than now, but it will still be creamy and lovely. So I thought I might give this to the cameraman for a little taste. <laughs> so I'll keep on doing this. All I'm going to be doing is actually putting it from there into here, scraping it all out, putting the lid on. Now the best thing is to keep it airtight if you can. So if this doesn't reach the top of my container, which I know it will, just put a, 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 a covering of cling form over it because you don't want any air between the ice cream and the lid, okay? Otherwise there could be some icicles form. Doesn't usually happen, but it could. So there you are. You can see in here, Michael, the beautiful little vanilla beans. Okay, so when this firms up, we'll serve it. And as I said, we're going to serve it as an affogato with a lovely shot of espresso coffee and um, we're going to serve it with Grand Marnier today but you can serve it with any liqueur to take your fancy. So we'll come back again when this is firmed up and we'll plate it. Okay everyone so we have churned our ice cream it has been in the ice cream container, a special ice cream container, any container will do but this happens to be a nice ice cream container. So I'm just going to scoop it out, a couple of scoops, you can see how lovely and creamy this is, just gently pop it into your serving glass, can you see down there Michael, <laughs> see how nice and creamy and smooth that is. And then what I do with this, you can have fruits in the bottom which would be delicious, you can have jellies as well, lots of different things. So I just. It's really lovely and, and luscious and soft, creamy. Now here is our shot of coffee. Okay, so the idea is that for those who want an avogato, this one is going to be with Cointreau. You can either serve it at the table with your coffee shot and your glass of Cointreau and your nice um, ice cream there with a few toasted almonds on the top. And then the idea is to pour a little bit of coffee on, drink some coffee as well, pour a little bit, in this case we're having Cointreau, pour a little bit of that on and drinking that as well and then topping it up with a few more lovely toasted slithered almonds 
or whatever you have on hand. And there is a very nice, easy, low, low carbohydrate, healthy fat dessert. Now you have to remember that it is a lovely dessert. If you want to make it totally low carbohydrate, you would probably leave out the Cointreau. Um, but that's up to you. You may decide to give yourself a treat, but everything else is perfect for our program.